Hey there, fellow creators. Are you ready to embark on an exhilarating journey of app development with Godot? Well, you've landed in the right place. Because that's exactly what the series is all about. We're going to dive headfirst into the exciting world of app design, starting with a simple yet eye-catching mock-up you might find on a web platform like Dribble or Behance. But we won't stop there. We're taking it up a notch. First, we'll block out our design masterpiece using the incredible Figma. Then the real magic happens as we breathe life into it with Godot's powerful interface nodes. And guess what? We'll sprinkle some coding wizardry into it to give functionality that will blow your mind. All right, folks, no more waiting around. Let's dive right in. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're at dribble.com. Went ahead and did a search for calculator. And what I wanted to do is find a calculator that was simple, yet still engaging. Uh, and going through the different designs, which there were a lot of really neat designs. But the one that caught my eye is over here by uh, Alexander Aniotis. Look on that. Oh, Dark Calculator. And I just found that it was simple. Yet, I like this grid pattern, but it's got some nice elements in here that we know are going to be for labels right here. And then we've got some buttons, got different colored buttons. As you can see, there's a difference in the hint of these, these colored buttons here. Let's give that a try. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take this image and we're just going to copy it. And we're going to bring it on over to Figma. Okay, so let's paste this on into Figma. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just do some simple mockups. I'm going to block it out a little bit. Okay, just using some of the standard tools. I know this is going to be a label. We're going to have a margin container in here. Let's just take a duplicate of one of these. I know it's got a, going to have a margin container because of all the extra space that's on the right side over here, on the bottom and on the top. So I'm just kind of looking at those and I can see right away that those are going to be areas that I need to address. We're going to need a grid so we need a grid right here because these are all going to be uniform buttons we can have inside here this one again take this one button close to what it's going to be. It's going to have to be precise here. This is just a mock-up because I know I'm going to need a grid container that's going to contain all of these different buttons in here. Now I know this right away down at the bottom, this is going to be a separate container. I'll put in this one down here. It is its own container that will have double wide button as well as two buttons in here and I know that these two buttons will live inside of another container so I could just put this in here and these two would go inside here so we'll have two buttons inside this container then we'll have a button on next to this container, all inside this container. And that will be stacked underneath, vertically, under this grid container, which will be stacked under this, contain this vertical container up here, this VBOX, which inside that has multiple labels we're going to be able to use. Okay, and so the last thing that we like to do is create the icons 
or the buttons that are going to live in this grid. Uh, we can just use the basic tools that Figma has to just kind of create something like that. Okay, now with that done, what I'd like to do is just take these pieces that we've made. I'm going to group them. And I'm going to label them. That way, what we'll do is we can export them. And they're ready to go to import right into, into Godot. That one. I got to get closer. There we go. And when we group them, We'll just rename them to see addition. Traction button. Okay, so with all those labeled now, I can go ahead and take them all selected, and I will choose export. We'll leave it as a PNG, and we will export them now. All right, now that we've mocked that up, what I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to take all these rectangles that we've made and I'm going to change their color just slightly so we can actually kind of see all those. And if we hide our original mock-up, we can see all the, the different components that we're going to need to create in Godot. Let's do that now. Okay, so let's start a new project in Godot. We're going to click on our new project. We're going to call this calculator. First thing we're going to do is take care of a couple preferences. As I always like to do, we'll go under project settings. And we're going to go to window. Change this to double the size of this. We'll do that by doing a times two. And we'll do the same thing here. And we're going to go ahead and make our test window the same dimensions. If we go to textures, let's change this from linear to nearest. It'll look a little nicer when we bring in our our icons. Speaking of which, if we bring in our icons, here we have them saved in our asset folder. Those in here. All of our, our assets for it. We're going to go ahead and click on user interface. Now, first and foremost, we'll call this calculator. And so for our calculator, we have a background now, but we need the actual screen for it. So we're going to create a panel. Uh, 
There it is. Panel. Call this. And this, we're going to just go ahead and put it right in the in the middle. And this particular thing, I'm going to go, we're going to just take these nodes and start kind of dragging them out. Why don't we just go over here and go 12? And this one we're going to do about, oh, about 664. Seems about right. Okay, so now that we have our screen, what we're going to need is to actually put a color in here. And we're going to do that with a color rec. It's going to be black. We'll go ahead and make it black. We're going to have it fill whole space. If we look at our Figma mock-up, you'll see that there, it's black here, but then it's got this, this black line separation. That's really just the background underneath these buttons. So we'll go ahead and set that up now. And the next thing we're going to need is a vertical container that's going to contain all of the components in them. And we need that using a VBox container. We'll call this all components container. And inside the, oh, so we'll go ahead and make sure we're stretching this out to all of them. And inside this container, here is where we're going to need to actually put another the, the VBox that will contain the two labels. We will call this our display container and inside here we're actually going to put our margin box margin container and then within the margin container is where we can actually do our labels first label and so these are going to be for the two different, we'll call them work areas. We have one is the history area. And this here, the history area and the actual equation that is being finalized. So we'll call the top one the previous work area. And what we'll do is we'll just give it like a 8 times 10. Oops, Let's, this is what it's going to be displayed as, 8 times 10. Um, if we start playing with the margin right now, we know that we're going to need, in our theme override constants, we know we had that top space. So if we put something like 150, that's going to just give us this top area of the margin. And so um, this label right here needs to be aligned to the right. If you look on here, we also have some padding on the side. So we will also take care of that with our margin container. So that's on the right side. Try something like. 30. Let's go 50. Okay. Now for our the font, we're going to do a theme override. Um, we know we're going to need a font that's different than the, the one that's the default. So I'm going to go system font. And inside the system font, I can just take that packed string font name. If I do an add an element, I can select from all the fonts that are currently on my system. I'm going to go with the Avenir. Then we will go down to our font sizes. This, I'm going to put something at like probably 30. And the color, if we go back to Figma, we can actually, now we could, we've got some different color things going on in here. So while we're here, let's just go ahead and make a few swatches. So 
we know that the gray is going to be the same for all the buttons. And so if I take our little dropper and that one, and now that's the, the font color. We are also, since we're here, we're going to have the color for the background of this one. That, okay. Well, it's going to duplicate this thing, and I'm going to now do the background. So that was the function button. Now we'll do it for the number button. Okay, close that. So they are different. They look similar with a gray background. But um, then the last thing we need to do here is this green button. So we'll take that, take a sample. And there we go. So now we have our color palettes ready to go. Uh, other than we have a, a white and then as we did before, the black. So let's go ahead and copy this so that we can come back over to Godot. And so the font color, we can override that now. And we'll just save it as a swatch because I'm sure we're going to use it again. So now that we have that previous work area, if we do a duplicate of that, and we'll call, we'll say that this is the number 80. And we're going to call this work area. Now you see that they're on top of each other, and that's because there's they need to be in their own VBox. So we're going to do that right now. We'll add one here, VBox container, and we'll just drop these two right inside there. Now they're, they're going to line up just as we had hoped work area label, we are going to change the only thing that were different were the colors. So we know that one was white, as well as the font size. So that we had is 30. Let's try 90. Yeah, it seems about right. So those are actually that's all we really need to do to set up the display. So the next part we need to work on is the bottom buttons. We will create another VBox down below, and we're going to call this one VBox. We're going to call this All Buttons. So now what we're going to have is we're going to be having a grid in here, as well as another HBox that's going to go below it. So in order to have those two th stacked together properly, we're going to need to put them in a, the first one will be in the grid container, as well as an H box. This will be the top buttons. This will be the bottom buttons. So now that we have those taken care of, Let's start filling this with buttons. Now, the way that a, a grid container works is that we have to go by how many columns we have. And in our case, we had four columns for our buttons. And if we start adjusting the size of our buttons, and we'll do that here in this custom minimum size. If we go with something uh, 150, 50. So for now, we can just go with that. Duplicate this four times. And we can already see that we don't quite have enough space. I like the spacing between them. But what we don't have is enough space to actually uh, fill to the edge. Now we could make the buttons bigger, but when we start adding more buttons, so if we take all of these, duplicate that. So this is the right amount of buttons for our grid. 
but we just don't quite have enough. So what I want to do is actually take up all the buttons. And we're just going to change the size here. And I think if we go with something like around 161. What we're going to do here is I'd like to kind of align that in the center so that it gives it just a little bit of breathing room on the edge of our calculator. And so we let's go ahead and finish our, our buttons. We've got the bottom buttons now, which what we can just do is take this, one of these that we've already done the work on, let's duplicate that and bring it right into here. And then as we talked about in the mock-up, because this is a double wide button right here, we're going to need these other buttons next to it. Let's see, I think what we can just do is if we make duplicates of these buttons, and we take that button, let's make it a, we'll make it double wide. So instead of 161, we'll do that. We'll just do times two for the width. And we can already see that it's getting close. So if we zoom in here, we know that I'm going to need these to be lined up and that I can affect that with this X value. So if I just increase it, I'm just looking at it, that looks about right. Those, those four corners line up. So now I've got the right size here. Let's start populating these buttons with their respective pieces. So in this case, this is going to have a C, and we'll call this clear button. And these buttons are going to have a texture on them. So the function buttons, which we created the icons for, are a little different than the, num the regular numeric buttons that we have. So I'll show you what we do for that. So first of all, let's rename this button is called, we're going to call this the negate button. And we're going to add a texture rec to it. Then we're going to do a quick load and we're going to find the button that we already made and put that in there and we are going to put it into the center and we're going to just this to keep aspect centered for the stretch mode and the last thing we need to do on it is change its visibility to that gray color. And this we will repeat this process and I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video now. You can join me when you're done. Okay, so now that we've put all those buttons on there like that, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to select each one of the buttons themselves that have the uh, numeric or the fonts that we're using. And we're just going to change their theme overrides all together. You know, their color is going to be the same as those other ones as the icons, as well as the font.
on the font size. And the last thing we need to do on here is this button. This equals button is a little different. It is not the same color as these other ones are going to be. And actually, we'll go ahead and take care of all these the, the same way. We're going to do theme override, change our style. We're going to create a new style box flat. And we're going to change the color to match the color that we had set out as a swatch in Figma to be that. Go ahead and save this as we'll call this equal normal equal style. Take these and we will override their style. We will, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to quick load this one. But we know the color is off, so we're going to change our color to the one from we set out in Figma. Is that? Gonna make it unique. Gonna save it as normal function style. I, I saw that it actually switched this color, and that's because I hit save rather than make unique and then save, which is fine. Sometimes that happens. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back in here and we'll pick it was a recent one, so we'll just select that as so that color and then what i want to do is take care of these uh actually we'll go ahead and save that now as we'll make it unique and we'll save and then we'll we'll call this one go back to this one we'll override it yeah that's what we want and now we want all of these number these and for their theme override, what we want to do is we can just use the quick load of the function style. And right away, I'm going to go ahead and go make unique. And we're going to change this color to the one we have in Figma. Make sure that we that style that we save this as There is a little border that is on here to kind of give it some depth. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and make that for ours as well. So if we go down here to theme overrides and under style, select into here. And our border width for the top is going to be, let's say one. Border color. We're going to just go something subtle, something like, like that. We'll go ahead and save that one. And we'll do the same thing for the other buttons. Got to go into theme overrides, styles, select its normal or width top. One. Actually, I think we're going to put it on the right side, too. We'll go ahead and recent color. 
that one we'll, we'll, we'll keep the same color and then we'll save it and we'll come back here and we'll, we'll add it to the to the right as well it looks a lot better i think when it's when it's consistent like that i'll do is put a one there that way when we look at our buttons you're all ready to go now the one thing i don't really care for is i don't think there's enough contrast here between this green that they mocked up and this white so what i'm going to do is for that texture that we put on there let's just change that back to a, like maybe like a black and i think that looks i think that looks a little bit better Okay. If we save our scene and we play it, we now have working buttons. And I will say that when you click a button, it leaves the focus on that button. And before we end this, let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So this time I can actually select all of the buttons. Just click on them because I want to affect all of these buttons in the same way. And if I do my theme override styles, I want to change the focus on all of these to just a, a style empty box. Then if we try it again, now that focus goes away when we click our button. This one needs a little bit of work. Let's just change, change that real quick. So that is going to be the normal. There was the normal equal style. But then what we're going to do is for the Pressed. We're going to also use the normal equal style, but we're going to change its color. We'll make it just lighter, something like that. And now, oh, it's the hover. It's the hover. So it wasn't the pressed, it was the hover. The hover pressed, we should make darker. It's fine. The hover. Seems to be saved. Make unique. Save it as normal equal, that is, this is hover. And this is pressed. You can go ahead and, and by saving all these out, you can customize them differently each time. So this one now will get that lighter color. We'll save that. One last try here. There we go. So now it, it changes when you hover over it. So now the next thing, the last thing to do for this project is to go ahead and let's put some logic in it and let's we'll code it up using GD script. Let's do that next. <laughs>